Hello, my name is Seamus Murphy and today we're here at Flanders Moss to learn more about the practicalities of peatland restoration in Scotland. Peatland restoration is an expensive process and usually requires a combination of public and private finance. So today we're going to hear from Peatland Action and the Peatland Code. My name is Guy Cole, I'm one of the Peatland Action Project Officers for Loch Lomond and Crossex National Park uh, and today we're at Flanders Moss. Peatlands are important habitats for several reasons. Um, they help combat climate change. When plants grow, they absorb carbon from the atmosphere. And because bog, bog plants don't uh, fully decompose when they die, they store some of that carbon as peat below the surface. Peatlands are very important for biodiversity. Um, they provide a home for animals, plants, fungi, microorganisms that are kind of adapted to this unique habitat. A lot of our drinking water comes from peatland habitats. A healthy peatland helps to reduce the amount of peat and pollution reaching uh, water catchments and it can also slow the surface flow, um, reducing the severity and number of flash floods further downstream. Um, peatlands are also important because they're very wet, very low oxygen environments, which means they can store organic material for up to thousands of years. They're also useful for archaeology and looking at past uh, environmental changes. So we restore peatlands, work with local landowners to re-wet and reprofile the ground to help try and keep some carbon trapped in the ground. We have several methods for doing that. The key one is drain or grip blocking. By damming a drain, we slow the amount of water flowing off the peatland and also can help direct some of that water back onto the bog. Uh, we reprofile hags and damaged gullies um, by changing the, sh the shape of the, of the slope on some erosed hag features and recovering with turf. Will help to reduce the amount of bare peat being exposed and help it to revegetate, um, again reducing further erosion. Um, also bare peat areas, we try and revegetate those either by introducing a nurse crop of bog species or covering with things like geotextile which helps keep the peat in place and also allow bog plants to recolonise those areas. Across Scotland it's estimated up to 80% of, of, of peatlands are degraded and 22% of Scotland's ground cover is blanket bog so we've got up to 80% of that being damaged. There's obviously issues with that in terms of adding to greenhouse gas emissions and you know, adding carbon to the atmosphere. So currently Scottish Government is aiming to restore a quarter of a million hectares of peatland by 2030, primarily through peatland action for this programme. Um, at the moment they've restored up to 42,000 hectares of peatland have been put onto the road to recovery um, and there's now an emphasis to increase that hectare year on year. In terms of expenses to the landowner, the cost for peatland restoration is covered by Scottish Government through the Peatland Action Programme. So that funds the designing and restoration work and in some cases also funds monitoring on some projects. And that's done either through the Peatland Action Grant Scheme or through Peatland Action partners like Loch Lomond and the Trossex National Park. First and foremost would be to get in touch with Peatland Action or the local Peatland Action Officer. Um, they can help early on in the stages, whether it's designing or getting access to contractors and they'll help you make sure you're, you're eligible for the grant scheme or for various funding. If they're involved early on in, in the stage in the process, they can kind of make sure everything lines up properly and then the funds can be released for the project. Hi, I'm Rane Kirkfleet Hermans um, and I'm the Pitland Codes Coordinator for the ISGN UK Pitland Programme. So that means I manage the Pitland Codes and we've got a small team um, that helped me with that. So the Pitland Code is a UK domestic voluntary carbon standard. So that is a fancy way of saying it's a standard that you can get um, carbon credits as a landowner. As a landowner, you've got eligible damaged peatland and then you restore that and you follow our standards, so the peatland code, then you can get carbon credits. By selling those carbon credits, you can add private finance into your peatland restoration. So it's a way to attract private finance for a landowner but it's also a standard that then gives confidence to buyers of those carbon credits. So before a landowner does anything to the land, so before they do any restoration, they will have to register the project on our UK land carbon registry. They can either do that themselves or they can use a project developer to help them um, with the whole process. They will then have an account and they can register the project. Then they do their project design. They survey the land, they survey the, the project. We've got a field protocol that sets out how, how they need to survey that, what kind of documents need to be filled in as well. Um, we've got a nationality calculator that checks additionality of a project, emissions calculator. So there's all, all these project design documents need to be filled in. That then be sent off to an independent third party validation body they check if the project is indeed eligible on the peatland code. 
if they are happy with the whole project design and eligibility, then they sign off that project. The landowner can then start the restoration on the ground. So they can either start during the process of validation or wait until the validation is in place. And they do the restoration, they have done after that, they finish the restoration, they've got one year of doing a restoration validation. So that's again, independent validator that comes on site that checks that they basically have done what they said they were going to do in a validated project plan. If that's all good, then we issue pending issuance units. So that's an, um, kind of an expected emission reduction for that project. So that's the amount calculated in our um, emission calculator tools. And every tonne of CO2 equivalent reduced is equal to one carbon unit. And then we do verification. So at, at, at year five, after finishing your project, and then after that, every 10 years, again, third party independently verified. Um, so then they, they go on site again, they check that your site is still in a better condition and than like what we expected at the start. And if so, then those units for that time frame get verified. At a validation state is when we set up all pending issuance units, so PIUs, for the whole project duration. So if the project is 30 years, so that's the minimum project length, but it can be up to 100 years, we set up all the PIUs for that whole, the whole time frame. So the expected emission reductions over the whole time frame. Those can already be sold. So if the landowner needs um, finance to go into the project at that stage, they can sell PIUs, they can sell all of them, they can sell a proportion of them, or they can sell none at that point. Um, and then at verification, it's like that proportion. So if a year five verification, the verifier looks at year zero to year five. It is deemed to be um, in the condition that we expected it to be, so that better condition. Then units from year zero to year five are verified. You can sell those as well. Like so, you can either sell them. You can only sell units once, obviously. You can either sell them as a PIU or a PCU. Um, and a PCU can be can be used as an offset by a company. So even if a company buys a PIU, so the pending unit they cannot use as an offset until the unit is actually verified. At the project validation state, that's when, um, when the projects do their baseline. So they need to do a baseline survey. Bulks, we, you need to um, map every single drain, you need to map your ero eroding features like your hacks and gullies where you've got bare peat, um, and then you get um, a drainage buffer around that. That gives you the area and your baseline. Um, for those size. So to be able to get carbon finance, it means you have to sell your carbon units. We don't provide any funding, so we, we are a standard that provides as a mechanism to set up carbon units. What we don't do is actually help with the sales of those units. Quite often a project developer acts also as a broker in that state, in that instance, so they, fi they help find a buyer for those units if you want to sell them, or you can go to a, speci a specific broker. Um, to help. Or you can find your own end buyer. So some, some um, landowners um, decide to do those negotiations with end buyers themselves. If you want to find out more information around the Beatland Code, then you can go on our website. It's, if you, probably the easiest way to get there is just Googling Beatland Code and then you'll find all our information. All our calculators are on there, the step by step how to contact us as well. But our email address is peatlandcode at iucn.org.uk. So today we heard from both Peatland Action and the Peatland Code as to how to practically restore peatlands across Scotland. For more information, please refer to the Peatland Code website and the Peatland Action website. And also there's additional materials on the Farm Advisory Service website.